look at that. Here's the future of my power supply for the RV. Oh, I'm really excited, guys. I Audrey, Stephen, and Bella, our charismatic Doberman. It's now been nine months living full-time in Artemis, our vintage RV. After replacing our refrigerator, we finally finished our big thrift project. With record high temps across the country, we decided to remove our basement air conditioning unit that never even worked, and it just required too much power for our boondocking needs. Join us this month as we show the ultimate DIY basement AC solution. We continue to get Artemis ready for the road before the cold weather comes back in just a few months. We hope you enjoy watching. Give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to follow our journey. All right, there's seven boxes. Here's one box. I figured I'd take you guys with me on an unboxing here. Uh, it's a Mighty Max battery, an ML125-12. It's a 12 volt, 125 amp hour battery. Uh, we went with AGM guys. Hope you can forgive me. Uh, a couple reasons. One, uh, these were very much in my price range, uh, being that I, I had to buy inverters and battery cable and everything that's necessary to hook these things up. I had to buy that. And that is a lot of money in and of itself. The second thing is, is that these things, well, they don't spontaneously combust as much as lithium ion does. <laughs> And I know lithium ion has gotten a lot better over the last couple of years. And I think eventually we will upgrade to lithium ion battery bank. But uh, this battery bank that I'm building right now should give me uh, 250 usable amp hours of power every day. It's going to be a 500 amp hour battery, but because it is an AGM uh, glass mat, you can only use 50% of the battery's capacity. Each battery bank tied together will give me about 250 amp hours. So let's get it out of this box. Let's get some bolts in it. Uh, I want to test the voltage on it, and uh, then I got so much more work to do inside, it's not even funny. So I just got to move all these things for right now until I can make room for them. 12.94. That's a fully charged battery if I've ever seen one. Okay, so here's the cubby that the radio is in. You see there's like a little electrical plug in and some space behind here. So we're just going to cut out a piece of plywood. I'll probably even paint it. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to get a piece of plywood here and that's where I'm going to mount our switches. Uh, and then I'm going to run that cable down there and then I'll get it into the bed, under the bed, so that I can get it out to the inverters. So that's where we're at right now. It's time to go find all my wood cutting supplies. Let's go have some fun. Not the straightest piece of wood I've ever cut in my life. I haven't cut that many pieces of wood, full disclosure. But, I bet you if I painted that, mounted it like so, it would look just about perfect. Now I gotta get holes drilled in it and cutouts for the switches. So I got this all roughly cut and I got the holes drilled and they line up and that's all good. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is mount my uh, switch panels in here so that I can control the inverter for the air conditioner and the inverter for the rest of the electronics for the bus. So I gotta get the holes cut out for this and I gotta get these things mounted and then I can start wiring everything. Well, I think it's official. This bedroom is a right proper mess. Um, I got some stuff here to clean up yet. Got a tripod down there and some fiberglass that we were using for insulation that we really don't need anymore. Uh, and then I'm going to run the cables that are in that cabinet down under the bed and start installing batteries. Um, I'm probably going to have to take this little cubby and these chairs and stuff out. That Xbox empty, this box is empty, but still. So much work to do. Let's keep on moving. So, you see that little hole right there? That drops down under there. I'm going to run it down and we're just going to drill a hole right in the back side of this thing so that I can run it through and uh, I can get it over there and I'm just going to drill a hole right in the middle. Hello red light. Right in the middle over there. Uh, it'll go down and then to the inverters. I don't have a whole lot of space to work with. Uh, one of these cables is only about 15, 16 feet long. And so hopefully um, I don't have to... Uh, 
order a longer cable. It's just phone cords, so I'm pretty sure I could get it from Amazon. You know, it's pretty basic, nothing fancy. Um, but I'm hoping that I have enough cord here. Hey, want to help us out? Subscribe to our channel. It's totally free, and it would really bring us joy. Then, click the bell notification so you know when we have a new video up. Thanks. All right, here's my steampunk install job. I am by no means a professional woodworker. That is what we in the business would call good enough. And I'm gonna have control of both of these inverters here. Now I just gotta drill a hole here and run that down so I can get it into the basement where the two inverters are gonna be. You have these run. Um, I might grab some like, uh, I don't know, like some cable mount or something, or I might even just get like some um, cable sheathing. I'm not sure. Not sure what I'm gonna do here, but even even so, the, just the mattress sitting on top of these is never gonna really damage them. Um, and it goes down here, uh, and I'll be bringing both of those wires down in the basement. Uh, but now, I got all that done. Oh, this is so flimsy, by the way. I thought that I would have enough space in the front of this to mount everything. I'm not sure if I do. So I'm gonna make some take some measurements right now. I need at least 26 inches of width in here. Uh, and if I don't have that, I'm pretty sure I do. So I'm going to check that right now. And uh, we're going to figure out how I'm going to be laying these batteries in here. If they're going to be offset a little bit or uh, if I can get them. I'm hoping I can get them tight together because the further apart they are, the more cable I have to use. And the more cable I have to use, well, I only have like 50 feet of cable to do all of this. So I got to be pretty frugal. Welcome to Underneath the Bed with RVTV. So I got to drill a hole into the basement, and I'll be honest with you, this is the first hole that I've had to drill that is making me a little nervous. So I'm going to drill here. Um, I've measured out into the basement roughly where everything important is, and I think that where I'm going to drill is going to be far enough away from it. But uh, I don't do this every day, and so this like whole just drilling holes in your home and hoping that you get it right is really really nerve-wracking so hopefully i don't do anything that i shouldn't hear so i think i want to go straight down there let's see what this does Let's go check the basement and see how bad I f***ed that up. I hope I didn't. I don't think I did. What do you know? I didn't f*** anything up. It's right about where I wanted it to come through. So, uh, now all I gotta do is just clean that up a little bit. And, uh, luckily I had everything pushed over, right? I could've, I could've went through a box of wire or gone through my freaking poo hose. That would've been real bad, huh? I just have to pull that stuff out before I drill any more holes, but... The holes that I drill tomorrow are gonna to be on the other side of that compartment because that's where the cables I think are gonna be coming down through. This is just for the remote uh, switches for the uh, inverters. So um, one of those wires is kind of short, so I'm gonna come right down in front of where that, the AC inverter is gonna be, air conditioning inverter is gonna be mounted right about here. Um, and so I want that wire to be able to come down and just plug right into it because I know that we don't have a whole lot of it, so. Okay, we're starting to lose our daylight about seven o'clock at night so i got about an hour worth of work time left and that's about it i have all of this back hardware in that i'm going to use for the batteries so i have these two um that the back batteries will just sit up against um and then i have a bunch of these l brackets so i'm basically going to box all these batteries in with l brackets uh to mount and then i'm going to use a couple of ratchet straps from these hooks down here and we're just going to run that over the top um, and secure the batteries down so they're not going to go anywhere. Um, so yeah, that's the basis of the battery box. I measured this out here and it looks like uh, we'll be able to fit two batteries side by side uh, with three inches on each side left over. So that should be enough. Um, I was thinking that I'd be putting my shutoff switch somewhere along this board right here. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think that the batteries are going to come too far back over in this bay, right? So I think what I'm going to probably end up doing is mounting it right here 
in this header. So it'll be just right here at the base of the bed. And that'll be my main battery power switch. All right, I got one battery in. Let's push back against there. It's three inches from the side here. I think that getting these other things in here are gonna be a challenge. My other hold down brackets. But I should be able to get it. You can see I have plenty of clearance here on top, so that's the good news. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox another one. And uh, we're gonna try and get it slid in here. These things are extremely heavy. Uh, I weighed us a little while ago and we were pretty close to weight. And I took a bunch of weight out of here, but this is gonna bring us right to the limit again by the time I get the cable and everything in here. So we're gonna have to get these batteries in here, go get us weight again, and then figure out just how much more weight we're gonna have to lose. But the most important thing is, is getting these in here because we cannot boondock at all without these batteries. Because I'm not just going to run my generator till 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. That's impolite. Um, and I want to be able to, to do this as stealth as possible. I know we're in a big class A. But um, if I can pull up somewhere and just kind of chill out without having to run a generator. And have all of the power that I need to to run basement heaters, to run an air conditioner, to run a couple of Xboxes. Well, that'd make me about as happy as an RVer can possibly be. Poor Bill, he's had no one to play with you all day. His dad has been working on the batteries. Are you sad? Can I have it? Give, give, give. Go, girl. All right, so I got most of the other batteries, six batteries put away in the garage for the night. Um, I have one battery on the coach that we test fit. Uh, I'm gonna take this battery. And I am going to throw it in right next to the one inside the coach. So I'll have two mounted in there tonight. Just test fitted. I'm not going to have the ratchet straps on or anything. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'll start building the cables for all these. Uh, finish getting them mounted. And then build out the rest of the electrical system. And get it hooked up to the other two inverters. We're all done for the night. I got these guys set down in here. Uh, I got about three and a half inches on each side. So it's actually really good. I'm going to be putting some portholes, probably like some two inch, three inch portholes along like probably one or two on this side and then like maybe one up here um, just to help get some air movement through here because uh, I don't want this thing to just be an oven with no way to get uh, airflow in here. That'd be a bad idea. So um, I got this all measured out. That's uh, looking really good. And uh, I put those brackets in here pretty even. So that's also good news for me. Uh, I did all the measuring. And I think the batteries are going to come out to right about here. About, uh, about 26 to 28 inches. Um, which will leave me um, a good foot and a half or so of extra room to mount like the bus bars and uh, the shunt and all that stuff. So, uh, tomorrow, I think I'm gonna start strapping and just, uh, wiring up each battery as we, as we get them in here and, uh, get them all secured. So after I get all eight batteries in here, um, I'll just wire as I put them in. Hopefully my job won't be so freaking hard when I go to drill into the basement and get all this stuff hooked up. So yeah, we're done for the night. Um, a lot of progress, a lot more work to do. Hopefully in the next couple of days, we'll be all plugged in and ready for boondocking. We're back under the bed today. I have six more batteries to mount and cables to run. And I got a bunch of hardware to mount and all kinds of other good stuff. Um, and I'm going to build the cables as we build it. So I'm going to get the two side brackets for these batteries installed. And then I'm going to bring in two more batteries. And I'll get the side brackets for those installed. And I'll start making cables to attach them to start making them 24 volts. We got the side bracket in there on both sides so now i'm gonna bring two more batteries in and i'm gonna start making cables and i'm just gonna keep going one by one by one until i get everything in here so actually i might even uh come in here and drill some holes first drill a hole out of the side here um for some you know battery ventilation there's my belly who's upset that we've been working all week and not fan here's my Kemper. Um, I bought it. Um, I haven't really played around with these hydraulic ones too much. Usually I have the manual ones. I bought this because I'm an old man and I have a lot of wires in front. Um, and then I have this cat packet right here. And then right here, oh, excuse the dirty laundry. I have the bedroom all ripped apart. So, um, 
so here's the cable so we're gonna go ahead and strip this uh, we're gonna get a cable cut and uh, we're gonna start making some battery cables so wish me luck welcome to under the bed with RVTV MPLS I want to measure out this cord uh, let's see if I can bring you guys here this is mildly uncomfortable to say the least so I think you don't want to bend this too much right so I think that'll work so I think if I cut it like right here that should be enough cable to get all these done this is such a how long is that can I do it with a little bit less cable that feels like it's comfortable and it's not too tight but man that's still a lot of freaking cable I guess I'm gonna cut this and yeah so we're gonna cut this right here I'm gonna make one two three four of these and then uh, yeah, I could probably get away with a little bit shorter so let's just do four of these for now right and that's just boom and boom okay so my first crimp was wildly unsuccessful <laughs> um so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this apart I'm gonna slide these two dies out of here and then we're gonna replace them with the next size smaller we're gonna see if we have any better luck I guess Again, I don't make wires every day. It's my first time with a hydraulic press like this. So there's definitely a learning curve. I have extra cables and I bought plenty enough wire. And this seems like it's going to be a, a quite lengthy process making cables. I'm going to be here a while. So let's try this one.